I started off my career studying thermal regulation. That's what I did as an undergrad. And so I have a deep love of that literature. Um, we have a storage of, of healthy fat in our body called brown fat, which is literally brown under the microscope because it's rich with mitochondria. Think of it as the, the oil in a candle. It allows you to feel warm in cold temperatures and it acts as a furnace for your metabolism. It's generally um, enriched around the clavicles, upper back and around the heart, a little bit around the liver. It's not the blubbery fat that um, people generally want to have less of. It's a, it's an endog it, it's a, a, deep, a deep tissue fat. Uh, it's really healthy. Uh, children have a lot of it. You tend to lose it over time unless you do cold exposure. Deliberate cold exposure is one way to enrich the amount of brown fat. You get a, a stronger furnace. Um, and there's some wonderful science on this uh, published recently in Cell, uh, Cell Reports Medicine by the first author is um, Susanna Soberg um, from Denmark. And it's really amazing work. What, what they showed is that um, 11 minutes a week divided up into a couple sessions of two to three minutes of deliberate cold exposure increases the density of brown fat in adults and allows them to feel more comfortable in cold temperatures when they're just walking around, okay? But also when they put themselves into this deliberate cold, and I'll talk about how cold in a moment, that then they achieve much bigger increases in core uh, resting metabolism, um, improvements in blood lipid, uh, blood lipid and, and insulin management profiles. And there's some other positive effects like improved mental resilience. So a lot of positive effects. Really wonderful study done in humans, right? Because uh, yeah, we want to distinguish between mouse work and-, well, and When you say increased density of brown fat, yeah. so that's not to be confused with increased body fat, right? Uh, no, no, increased density so that the mitochondrial density of the brown, think about the brown fat as like an oil in a candle that allows it to, or that allows it to burn hotter and longer. Yeah, so so that's one, that's one um, aspect. The other- um, so 11 minutes per week. So what, what, what does this involve? Well, a lot of people say, okay, do I need to get into an ice bath? No, you need to get uncomfortably cold for 11 minutes a week. That could be done with a cold shower. That could be done by getting into an ice bath. That could be done by getting into the ocean. That could be done by getting into a lake. That could be, um, it is not important how you get cold. You could even put ice packs on your on your neck or in your whatever, in your, your pants. Just get I mean, cold. People do that. Uncomfortable. Um, you get uncomfortably cold. How cold depends. And people always say, I want to give me a number. Well, what's uncomfortable to you is not going to be uncomfortable to me and vice versa. So uncomfortably cold. And then the, the key thing is that it needs to be safe, right? I mean, you're not going to jump into 30 degree Fahrenheit water. You're going to, your heart will stop, right? So you, you're going to try and get into chilly water that you want to get out, but you can calm yourself and stay in for that period of two to three minutes. Sometimes it, you'll be a little colder and other times you'll be a little warmer. So you don't want to obsess about this. There's one study that was done having people submerge themselves in water of about 60 degrees, which is not particularly cold, 60 degrees Fahrenheit, but they did it for 45 minutes. So it could also be being in kind of, you know, when you get into a pool and it's not quite warm enough, it could be that, but you stay in longer. But for 11 minutes, it should be pretty uncomfortable. Like you want to get out. Ideally, if you, why, I should mention, there's not much science around cold showers for the obvious reason that cold showers are hard to do in a laboratory because then you don't know are people under the is their head under are they facing it are they turning away most of these studies have been done with submersion but the other day when i was in boston i woke up and i thought i really want some cold exposure it was cold outside so i just walked around in a t-shirt i walked to a, to get some food um in a short sleeves everyone looked at me like i was crazy and got 30 minutes of cold exposure just walking to the, to the store and I Ubered home because it was really cold. The wind chill was pretty, pretty bad. So, or pretty good, I should say. So I think you get that 11 minutes per week and that sets you up for this effect. And it should be divided across multiple sessions, but it could be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then you have four days off. It could be Monday, Wednesday, Friday. It doesn't really matter. So don't try and do 11 minutes in one go in an ice bath? Probably not. I mean, not at first. I mean, some people can do that. Now, there are other reasons to do cold exposure. What happens when you get into cold? A couple of things. You vasoconstrict and there's a rebound vasodilation. So you're getting per better perfusion and blood flow. The biggest effect is a big increase, 2.5x increase in dopamine that lasts for several hours. Uh, you know, it's a significant increase. You feel mentally clear. You feel alert. Um, it increases metabolism for the reason we discussed before. And then there's the process of getting into this cold water when you didn't want to. And that is overriding limbic friction. That's that top-down control. So you build resilience. And no surprise there, a lot of the screening tools for special operations and other screening tools involve forcing people to get 
for people deliberately forcing themselves, I should say, to get into cold bodies of water that are really uncomfortable, but not dangerously cold. So th there are other effects too. Um, for instance, if you want to enhance fat loss and lipolysis, it does seem like activating shiver is key because when you shiver, the muscles release a molecule called succinate. Succinate then goes and activates the brown fat. So you get a further increase in metabolism. And there's yet a, another, oh, and to activate sh uh, shiver, excuse me, I stuttered why I said shiver, it almost sounded like I was shivering. The, one of the best things you can do is get into the cold source, whatever it happens to be. If you don't shiver while you're in there, get out, but don't dry off and just stand there. You'll start to shiver pretty quickly as it starts to evaporate off you. Mm -hmm.